The Household and the Spiritual Life of the Mother by St. Paisios the Athenite Yerinda, how can a housewife regulate her housework so she can have time for prayer? In other words, what ratio should there be between house chores and prayer? Women usually have no sense of moderation when it comes to household chores. They're constantly finding things to do. While they do have a lot of heart, and could do much house cleaning in their soul, they often waste their heart on insignificant things. Let's say we have a delicate glass with very intricate designs. Now, if this glass didn't have all these designs on it, it would still serve its purpose as a glass. But no, women go to the store and start, No, I want the designs up higher, to this point. No, not this way, the other way. And if there should be some floral details on it, well, then the heart really starts leaping. But by doing this, women lay waste to all their energy and potential. You'll hardly find a man paying so much attention to such details. For example, a man will hardly notice if a lampshade is brown or black. But a woman wants something beautiful, and she rejoices in it. She gives a part of her heart to this, a part to that, and then what is left for Christ? Only a tired yawn is spared for the time of prayer. The more a woman distances her heart from material things, the closer she comes to Christ. And when her heart is given to Christ, then she acquires great strength. Just the other day, I saw a soul who had dedicated herself entirely to God. You could almost see a sweet light burning within her. She deals with everything in a gentle and warm way. She used to be very worldly, but she had a good disposition, and at some point the spark was kindled within her. Gold, fine clothing. She threw it all away. Now she lives very simply. She struggles to live a spiritual life. Her spirit of sacrifice is remarkable. She has become envious of the saints, in the good sense. What attentive effort to the Jesus prayer. What fasting. What reading of the Psalms. It is amazing. She is now nurtured by her ascetic efforts. Yerinda, a mother told me, My body is very weak and I get very tired. I don't even have time to finish my chores, let alone say my prayers properly. She has to simplify her life so that she can have time to pray. A mother can make great progress through simplicity. If a mother has simplified her life, but still gets tired because she has many children, then yes, she is entitled to say, I am tired. But if she wearies herself trying to make the house look good for the guests, well then, what can we say? Some mothers, in order to keep the house tidy, asphyxiate the children, confining them to one part of the house, and don't allow them to move a single chair or pillow. They impose a military type of discipline, and... While the children are born fine, they grow up damaged. A wise and discriminating person, seeing an immaculate home with many children, will come to the conclusion that either the children are damaged, or the mother is barbarian and imposes military discipline. There is fear in these children's hearts, and for this reason they are obedient. Once I had gone to visit the home of a large family, I was so pleased to see the children with their childish naughtiness spoiling the worldly order of things, which requires having everything in its place. That is the greater disorder, which wearies contemporary man. In the past, there weren't that many spiritual books available for a mother to read and be helped. Today, even though there are many patristic texts and a lot of translated works available, Unfortunately, most mothers are either preoccupied with foolish things or they work in order to make ends meet. It's better for a mother to be involved with the nurturing of her children rather than being overly involved with household chores and inanimate objects. A mother can speak to her children about Christ. She can read the lives of the saints to them. Thus, at the same time, she will be occupying herself dusting off her own soul so that it will be spiritually shiny. The mother's spiritual life will then quietly help the souls of her children. Thus her children will live happily, and she will be joyful because she will have Christ within her. 
If a mother doesn't find the time to even say a simple trisagion, how can she expect her children to be sanctified? But Yerinda, what if a mother has a lot of children and a lot of work to do? When she does her housework, can't she pray at the same time? It was my mother who taught me to say the Jesus prayer. When we were children and had done some mischief, and my mother was about to get angry with us, I remember her saying, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. When she put the bread in the oven, she would say, In the name of Christ in Panagia. And whenever she was kneading or cooking again, she constantly said the Jesus prayer. In this manner, she herself was blessed, as were the bread and the food she was preparing, and so were those who partook of it later. There are so many mothers who led a holy life and had holy children. For example, the mother of Elder Haji Georgis. Even the milk of this blessed mother who nursed Gabriel, that was the worldly name of Elder Haji Georgis, was ascetic. She had two children and afterwards lived with her husband in purity, loving one another as siblings. She had an ascetic spirit from early on as she was inspired by her sister who was an ascetic nun. She would go and visit her sister and later would take her children with her. Gabriel's father was also a pious man who worked as a merchant, which required him to spend most of his time away on trips for his business. This gave his mother the opportunity to live simply, not to be anxious and troubled about many things, and to take Gabriel with her when she went with other women for vigils in the caves or country chapels. This is the reason why he later achieved such holiness. The mother's devotion has great significance. If the mother has humility and fear of God, then family life is smooth. I know young mothers whose faces shine, even though they have no one to help them. I can understand a mother's spiritual state by looking at the children.